we are two weeks away from the 2022 NFL Draft. And on today's episode of Time to Football, we've got our Mock Draft 2.0. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Time to Football. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this channel, Time to Football. You guessed it. Glad you guys are able to join us for this Mock Draft 2.0, because last week was our Mock Draft 1.0. If you missed that, I'm going to go ahead and include it on top so you guys can click on it, if you guys please, and watch it, because what we do every year is we bring in our draft analyst, Michael Watson, to join us, and we have a dual Mock Draft where uh, one person has even numbers, the other person has odd numbers, and we just kind of go back and forth and picking these players. So if you guys missed that, go back and watch that video uh, last week's episode. Uh, but today is going to be our Mock Draft 2.0, where it's just going to be me solo. And this couple things I want to go over with this Mock Draft. Uh, number one, if at any point you want to skip around in this video because you're just interested in just specific teams, specific picks, uh, I'm going to include timestamps after this video premieres on YouTube. So on your phone, on your computer, just feel free to scrub through. You'll see timestamps in, in certain spots where uh, each team picks. And then second of all, this isn't going to be 100% accurate. I know that mock drafts, uh, specifically for my channel and probably other creators out there, is probably the more disliked videos uh, for the year that they have uh, for NFL channels. Just because, you know, you say one thing, oh, I don't agree with that pick. Dislike, well, yes, uh, number one, a lot of people will have opinions, different opinions. So just be open to people's opinions. But also secondly, this isn't going to be 100% correct, but it is the most educated mock draft out there. Probably up there with the most educated because this is based off of what multiple draft analysts are saying. Like where draft analysts themselves, like Todd McShay, Mel Kuyper, Dino Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, like those top guys, rank these players. So these aren't my opinions. This isn't me going like, well, I think... Trayvon Walker is better than Aiden Hutchinson. No, this is based off of like what analysts are saying. Like who do they have ranked in what order? And this is based off of rumors, like where teams are or, or which teams are interested in which players. So this is all based off of what I'm hearing and has little to do with my opinion. So I just want to go ahead and throw that out there, okay? And this is also based off of what I'm hearing, based off of uh, which teams are interested in trading up, trading down. I think, as a matter of fact, we uh, have four trades in this mock draft that I'm excited to talk to you guys about. So keep an open mind. I know that this isn't going to be 100% accurate. No mock draft is ever accurate, you know, outside of like maybe five to 10 picks. So keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and get started with this mock draft. And we're going to go take you pick by pick, team by team and what each team is thinking as the draft progresses. All right, so let's start with pick number one with the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's not a lock from what I'm hearing. It used to be a lock that Aiden Hutchinson was going to be the guy. But now Trayvon Walker is jumping up the draft boards, and people are saying that he could potentially be the number one pick in the draft. Could it happen? Yes, but I believe... Most people, based off of what analysts are saying, have Aiden Hutchinson ranked as the number one player in this draft. So I'm going to go ahead and say, for now, for Mock Draft 2.0, Aiden Hutchinson is going to get picked by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, this was probably given for most people for the last month, month and a half or so, but Hutchinson locked in as a Jaguars pick with all the additions that they made. On that Jaguars offense, they need to address that Jaguars defense. Aiden Hutchinson seems like to be the safest choice in uh, for the number one overall pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, number one, Aiden Hutchinson to the ja to the Jags. Uh, now, number two, we've got the Detroit Lions picking now. Trayvon Walker is being talked about potentially being the number one pick. Some people out there like. Todd McShay, I think he has Kyle Hamilton. Maybe it's Mel Kuyper that has him uh, going to the Detroit Lions. Other people have Kayvon Thibodeau. I'm going to go ahead and say just because Trayvon Walker is jumping up the boards that Trayvon Walker is going to be drafted by the Detroit Lions. So, you know, you could say, okay, if the Jaguars pick Trayvon Walker, then the Lions are going to pick Aiden Hutchinson. 
So I think it's just going to come down to those two, either or. Uh, I think the Lions are going to settle with an edge pick uh, with the number two overall pick because they do have the number 32 pick, which they can later on address and grab a wide receiver if they wanted, someone on the offensive line if they wanted, maybe even bolster their defense later on in the draft as well. But for the number two pick, let's say that Trayvon Walker gets drafted by the Detroit Lions. Now with the number three pick, Hutchinson is gone. Trayvon Walker is gone. They have a couple of options that they could have uh, that they could draft. Kyle Hamilton being one of, if not the best player in this draft, safest choice for a lot of people. But then they've also got offensive line issues. I know they've got defensive issues as well. This team needs help everywhere. Uh, Iki Iquanu is someone that they've been talking about, like many people have mocked going to the Houston Texans. I'm going to say with Kyle Hamilton still left on that board, The Texans go down the route of drafting Kyle Hamilton, and here's why. The Houston Texans had the number 13 overall pick from that trade with Deshaun Watson. So with the safety position not being as deep as maybe offensive line, the Texans could say, okay, well, with the number three pick, let's go ahead and address our defensive issues, pick Kyle Hamilton, and then later on, we'll just pick the best available offensive tackle, whether that be Charles Cross, whether that be Trevor Penning, if Iki Iquanu somehow, some way, I don't think it's going to happen. If he falls, hey, awesome. But I think with the number 13 pick, that that's the thinking behind the Houston Texans is, okay, it's deeper in offensive line. Let's wait. Let's not jump the gun. Let's wait a bit. Let's see how the draft plays out. For now, let's pick what people are saying is one of the best players in the draft in Kyle Hamilton. So that's the thinking behind that. Uh, They also lost Justin Reed, so they need to fill in that void uh, for the Houston Texans. Now with the number four pick, the New York Jets. This one is interesting because the Jets have the fourth pick and the number 10 pick. A guy that they're very, very, very interested in. They're actually interested in two people. Ahmad Garner and Jermaine Johnson the edge rusher from Florida State. So you got to think to yourself, number four pick, number 10 pick. If I'm the New York Jets, if I'm Joe Douglas, how do I address this? How do how can I get both of those players with these top 10 picks? Well, you have to look at the draft board because coming up, you've got the the Giants at picking uh, picking at number five and at number seven. And according to rumors and reports out there, the Giants are, are very interested in Ahmad Gardner. The Jets are very interested in Sauce Gardner as well. So, given that the Giants are picking at number five and number seven, they want to make sure that Ahmad Gardner does not slip from their hands. So they go ahead and pick Ahmad Gardner with the number four pick. Some people could say this might be an overdraft for uh, Ahmad Gardner. I've seen him like t- closer towards the end of the top ten getting picked, but but I'm just thinking in the mind of Joe Douglas, like, I want to make sure that he's not taken. Even if I have to overdraft for maybe three, four picks, I'm going to make sure that he's on my team. So Ahmad Garner is going to be pairing up with a lot of people that, uh, you know, some up-and-coming players on the Jets in that secondary, like Michael Carter. Uh, he could be pairing with them, some free agent signings like Jordan Whitehead and the safety. Uh, he's going to be a great addition for that secondary for the New York Jets. With the number 10 pick, hope hopefully the Jets can draft Jermaine Don- Johnson because, like I said, reports are out there saying the Jets want to grab Jermaine Johnson. Number five, the New York Giants, the first of their two first-round picks. Need a lot of help, man. Need wide receiver, need offensive tackle, need some defensive help as well. No offensive tackle has been taken yet, and some people are talking about maybe Iki Iquanu, maybe it's Evan Neal as the best offensive tackle. Just based off of what I saw draft analysts saying, the majority, and it's just by like a small margin, the majority are saying that Evan Neal is the best tackle in this draft. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the Giants draft Evan Neal. Rumors are out there saying that with their number five pick and their number seven pick, their top two picks in the in the NFL draft, they want to go offensive tackle and cornerback. Well, with Ahmad Gardner gone, 
All right, let's go ahead and take a tackle for now because the Carolina Panthers are picking at number six. They're more than likely going to take a tackle if one of the top tackles is available. So let's go ahead and take the best tackle in the draft to make sure that we lock him in. And then at number seven, we can reconsider and draft a cornerback later. So at number five, I'm going to say that the, the Giants take Evan Neal, offensive tackle from Alabama. Now at number six, the Carolina Panthers. Oh my gosh, this is this is interesting. So Jordan Schultz, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He's an NFL insider. He's kind of like an independent guy. He used to work for ESPN. Uh, very knowledgeable, has a lot of sources, and he's accurate about a lot of things. Like very, very cool uh, uh, follow on Twitter. He's been saying that he would be surprised if Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis are not taken. Both are not taken in the top 10. He'd be like, yeah, like many teams get kind of trigger happy. They kind of trade up for these quarterbacks. It's a quarterback friendly league. Like, so don't be surprised if someone pulls the trigger and takes a quarterback or trades up inside of the top 10 to take Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett. The Carolina Panthers are one of those teams that need a quarterback. Uh, Sam Darnold can say whatever he wants on busting with the boys, but the Carolina Panthers are in need of a quarterback at this point. So, they could go down the route of Kenny Pickett, who's the top-rated quarterback, consensus quarterback, uh, based off of what analysts are saying. But I think with Iki Ikwanu still available on that board, they want to go ahead and lock in Ikwanu. <sighs> quarterback, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really freaking tough for the Carolina Panthers. I don't have a trade projected in this mock draft for them. But do not be surprised if the Carolina Panthers trade down from the number six pick to acquire more picks because they don't have a second round pick. They don't have a third round pick. It's the number six pick in the first round. And then a fourth round pick is their very next pick. So don't be surprised if some people are calling like, hey, you need some draft capital. You want to go ahead and trade down. The Carolina Panthers could be like, oh, yeah, like if we acquire a second round pick, maybe we can draft a Desmond Ritter or a Matt Corral or a Sam Howell in the second round. So don't be surprised if that happens. But for now, I'm going to say with Iki Ikwanu still available on the board, some people are regarding him as the best tackle in the draft, I'm going to say that they're going to go ahead and draft Iki Ikwanu. So that's my thinking behind the Carolina Panthers. All right, you guys are ready for some drama right here? Some excitement? Uh the number seven pick is owned by the New York Giants. Now, they, like we said earlier with the number five pick, took an offensive tackle, and rumors are saying they want offensive tackle and cornerback with their top two picks. Well, there is some depth in cornerback in the position. There's Stingley, McDuffie, Andrew Booth as well, Roger McCreary as well. So they could wait a little bit later on in the first round to take a cornerback. I'm the New York Giants. I want a cornerback. I could wait a bit. Which teams are calling me? How about the Baltimore Ravens calling? Because they're inquiring about one player that is falling in draft boards that has one of the best raw talents at the edge position in this draft. Think about Kayvon Thibodeau falling in this draft and the Ravens calling the New York Giants with the number 14 pick saying, listen, if you need to trade down New York, inquire more picks, I got you. You can pick at the number 14 spot. And we also have two third rounders that we're willing to either offer you a third rounder or a second rounder for us to trade up seven spots to grab a player that is falling in this draft, K. Von Thibodeau, to the Baltimore Ravens. So I am projecting a trade to happen between the Giants and the Ravens. The Giants trade their number seven pick to the Ravens for their number 14 pick and a second round pick to trade up seven spots and grab Kayvon Thibodeau. The first trade of this draft, the Ravens trading up for Kayvon Thibodeau. If you're a Baltimore Ravens fan watching this video, if you're a New York Giants fan, I'd encourage you guys to go ahead and leave a comment down below. I love to hear your opinions. I love to hear uh, what you guys are, are feeling in, in regards to that. All right, the number eight pick. So we saw one trade happen. Now the Atlanta Falcons are on the board. 
the Falcons are in need of a lot of positions, wide receiver, quarterback, but then you could also grab an edge rusher because you need some edge help. Who's the next best available edge rusher? It's Jermaine Johnson. Hold up. What do we say about the New York Jets? They were interested. They are gushing over Jermaine Johnson. This is according to Joe Douglas. Like rumors saying Joe Douglas loves Jermaine Johnson. Hold up. Atlanta, calm down, calm down, calm down. Hello? Yeah, this is Joe Douglas. I don't know how he sounds. Are you interested in trading down to the number 10 pick? Us jumping up two spots, and then we can give you our sixth round or a sixth pick in the second round. Because we have two picks in the second round, the Jets do. We we can afford to trade one of those second round picks to the Atlanta Falcons to move on up two spots so that we can lock in Jermaine Johnson. Would you be interested in that? The Falcons? Oh, oh my gosh. Like, if we just trade two spots back, which isn't going to hurt us from the number eight pick to the number 10 pick, and we get an additional second round pick? Yeah. I think at that point, if I'm not mistaken, the Falcons, who already have two second round picks, could get three second round picks just by trading back two spots. So the Falcons are like, Heck yeah, let's do this. Jets, perfect. It's a deal. Boom, locking in Jermaine Johnson to the New York Jets. It's it's a win-win for both teams because the Jets, already with two second-round picks, they feel like they don't lose a lot of capital. The Falcons, oh, just two spots. There's still going to be some pretty good players available and at pick 10. Sure, and we get an additional second-round pick that we could use later on. So it's a win-win for both teams, and I'm saying that the Jets are drafting Jermaine Johnson. So with the two picks for the New York Jets, Ahmad Garner and Jermaine Johnson. The reason why is because they wanted to jump the Seattle Seahawks, who are at number nine, who need some help help at the edge, and they could be taking an edge rusher, so the Jets want to make sure that they lock it in over the Seattle Seahawks. Now with the number nine pick, we have the Seattle Seahawks, Now, they'd go down the route of drafting Malik Willis. You could, but I'm going to say with Pete Carroll at the league meetings, the the league meeting that they had with the coaches and the owners, he went on and on and on about Drew Locke. Maybe he's just saying that because a coach has a backup of his players. But he went on about Drew Locke being like, oh, hey, he's actually a pretty decent quarterback. Is he going to be the starter in 2022? I don't know. But based off of what Pete Carroll was saying and how much praise he was giving Drew Locke, that kind of tells me, don't overdraft for a quarterback. Like, let's wait in the draft later on. Let's reassess for now if Drew Locke is our guy. Let's just get him help. So I'm going to say that the Seattle Seahawks are taking the next best offensive tackle, and that's going to be Charles Cross from uh, Mississippi State. They play it safe. It's okay. It's not the the sexiest name in the world. I know Seahawks fans want like that Malik Willis, like that surefire, like awesome pick. But let's just play it cool for now. Let's just say that Charles Cross is the guy, the offensive lineman that the draft here. Now at number 10, we had the New York Jets originally, but you remember that trade between the Jets and the Falcons. The Falcons now have the number 10 pick. They could take Malik Willis here. They could take Kenny Pickett. They could take a top quarterback. However, My thinking is, with the Falcons being so quick to sign Marcus Mariota, like in a matter of, what was it, 45 minutes after trading away Matt Ryan, kind of tells me, okay, they're okay with Marcus Mariota being the quarterback for 2022. Worst case scenario. They have three second round picks now after that trade with the New York Jets. So because of that, I'm going to say they could wait on quarterback later on. Let's go ahead and take some much-needed offensive help at the wide receiver position and take the best wide receiver in this draft, and that is Garrett Wilson from Ohio State. We don't know the future of Calvin Ridley. We don't know if he's going to return after the season. Uh, and if you look at the roster of the Atlanta Falcons, Alameda Zacchaeus, Frank Darby, like those guys, no shade towards them, but they're not household wide receiver one name. So the only guy that you have is Kyle Pitts, Uh, If you really, truly want to roll with Marcus Mariota and Cordero Patterson and uh, Kyle Pitts, then you need some more offensive help 
uh, for those guys. And Garrett Wilson is going to be a huge step up for the Atlanta Falcons. It's a safe pick. Pick him. And then in the second round with one of those three second round picks, take a quarterback. Desmond Ritter might be available, who the Falcons are actually pretty high on. Uh, Sam Howell was recently visiting with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, and then also, they're also interested in Isaiah Spiller, the running back as well. So, you know, in the second round, they could definitely do some damage. Number 11, we've got the Washington Commanders. Now, I cannot see any pick for them outside of a receiver. Maybe if Derek Stingley could be an option, but this offense is one of the reasons why the, the Commanders for the last couple of years hasn't been as good as you'd hope. Like, this defense has been great. You need to bolster that offense. You need some help for Carson Wentz. Let's get uh, the next best available uh, wide receiver, and that is Drake London. Terry McLaurin might have some contract disputes coming up if they don't want to re-sign him to these uh, this massive deals that wide receivers are getting. Uh, yeah, you're, you're going to be safe with Drake London being your wide receiver one if Terry McLaurin decides to walk in free agency in the next year or two. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that the commanders are taking Drake London. Now, the Minnesota Vikings are at number 12. Now, this is interesting because rumors are out there saying that the Chargers are wanting an offensive line alignment bad in this draft, preferably an offensive tackle because they lost Brian Bulaga. There are rumors out there saying that the Minnesota Vikings could trade down with the Chargers. I don't know what kind of capital the Chargers will give up. They don't have a second round pick. They'd probably have to give up a first for next year. But if they really like a guy, they're willing to do it. So I think the Chargers are going to call the Minnesota Vikings and ask about that. Say, hey, can we trade up to that number 12 spot? Minnesota Vikings are like, you know, we talked about it before the draft. There, there was some interest of us trading down. However, Derek Stingley is still available on the board. He's the next best available cornerback. We need cornerback help. Our secondary was, uh, was getting beat up. Uh, Patrick Peterson, we resigned him to a one-year deal, but he's not the future. Uh, we also lost Jeff Gladney and I think Xavier Woods that they lost in, in free agency. Uh, so we've also added a lot of depth in, in free agency on that front seven. So we need some help in the secondary. So let's just go ahead and draft Derek Stingley and just be safe with that. He's our shutdown corner. We hope for the future. Was great at LSU a couple years ago. Since then, has been kind of inconsistent, but hopefully he can go back uh, to his freshman season. Now at number 13, the Houston Texans. We talked about them. All right, so the Chargers are now panicking at number 17. They're like, oh my gosh, we need an offensive tackle. Like, the Houston Texans, they could be drafting a tackle here. They call the Texans, hey, Texans, is there anything we can do? We will give you a first-round pick next year. What can we do? Like, we want to trade up and grab an offensive tackle. The Texans are like, nah, like, this worked out perfectly for us. We got our defensive help and Kyle Hampton. Now we can grab our offensive lineman. Uh, and the next best available offensive tackle is going to be Trevor Penning from Northern Iowa. Many uh, scouts and GMs don't predict him to fall past uh, number 14. So the Texans being at number 13, this makes a lot of sense. Grab Kyle Hamilton. They're going all in on Davis Mills, it seems like. Grab some offensive line help for uh, Davis Mills. So with your first round picks, both of them, defensive cornerstone, offensive line cornerstone. You should be good. The Houston Texans, great pick to get Trevor Penning. Now at number 14, the Giants traded with the Baltimore Ravens early on. The Ravens traded up at number seven to get Kayvon Thibodeau. So the Giants now fall to number 14. And we talked about them going back to that rule, that rumor out there saying that they want offensive tackle and they want cornerback. They draft the next best available cornerback who had an amazing pro day at Washington. That is Trent McDuffie, who is shooting up draft boards as well. I think they're fine. Again, they could have drafted Derek Stingley, but this cornerback position is pretty deep at this in this draft, in this draft class. They're okay with Andrew Booth or Trent McDuffie. So I'm gonna go ahead and say they draft the next best available cornerback, and that is Trent McDuffie. So Evan Neal on the offensive line, Trent McDuffie for cornerback, pair him with James Radbury. You are good to go. Now at number 15. Hey, let's have some fun again. Trade number three that we project to happen at number 15. So the Philadelphia Eagles, they have a first-round pick next year with this trade with the New Orleans Saints. They had to give up a first-round pick this year. They originally had three first-round 
picks. And a team that is interested in trading up because receivers are dropping like flies to these teams, the Green Bay Packers. Oh, man. You gave up Devontae Adams. You need a wide receiver bad. You hit up the Philadelphia Eagles. Hey, your number 15 spot. I know that the Saints, who are at number 16, are interested in a wide receiver. I want to jump ahead of the Saints to grab a wide receiver. Eagles, I am willing to trade you the number 22 pick and the number 28 pick so that we could jump up to the number 15 pick. Eagles, Howie Roseman, oh yeah, I don't know, number oh, three first round picks. Yeah. They do it. They do it. You're in. So the Packers trade their 22nd pick and the 28th pick to move on up to the number 15 pick to draft Jamison Williams. That's right. It could be Chris Olave. I wouldn't be surprised. It could be Drake London if he falls. But Jamison Williams is showing a lot of progress in his ACL recovery. And many experts out there, the the receiver rankings, consensus rankings based off of all the experts out there. It's uh, Garrett Wilson, top receiver. Uh, Drake London is the second best receiver. And then Jamison Williams is the third best receiver. Number four is Chris Olave. So, you know, don't be surprised if it's Chris Olave or Jamison Williams, either or. I feel like the Packers could make a move with those two first rounders to trade up for a wide receiver. And they want to jump the Saints, who are interested in a wide receiver as well. And Jamison Williams is a guy that makes a lot of uh, moves in space uh, with his route running as well, and, and just like Devontae Adams. So at the end of the day, after trading away Devontae Adams, acquiring a second round, or first round pick and a second round pick for him, and trading up to get Jamison Williams, at the end of the day, they trade Devontae for Jamison Williams and a second round pick. I mean, that's, that's a decent trade. If, if the Packers can execute this, Devontae Adams for Jamison Williams and a second-round pick, I don't, I don't think that's a bad move. I really don't. Given that Devontae Adams wanted a, lot, a whole lot of money looking at salary cap in that instance. So the Packers move on up to number 15 to grab Jamison Williams. If you're a Packers fan, if you're an Eagles fan, and you're mad at me, please comment down below. I, I want to interact with you guys. Again, This I, I don't know if this is 100% going to be accurate. But I'm, I'm just thinking in the heads of general managers and teams and their needs. Uh, so just keep that in mind. All right. So at the number 16 spot, at, we're halfway through this draft. We've got the Saints who are like, dang it. We need offensive line and we need wide receiver. They're, they're in win now mode. Trading with the Philadelphia Eagles to get two first rounders. Many people expect them to trade those two first rounders as well to move on up to draft a quarterback. So there's rumors out there that Hey, you could draft a quarterback as well. We need offensive line and wide receiver as our dire needs to help us get into the postseason. But if they were interested and reports are out there saying that they're interested in trading their first round picks to move on up to get a quarterback, no quarterback has been taken yet. So let's just go ahead and take one right now. Let's take one right now. Let's take Kenny Pickett with the number 16 overall pick. And I say that they take Kenny Pickett here instead of number 19 when they draft a little bit later on because with the offensive linemen being taken, with the wide receivers being taken, they're just kind of like, okay, let's just take our quarterback for now. And then depending on what the Chargers do at 17, what the Eagles do at 18, who they draft, let's just let's just wait it out. Let's just see what's going to happen. And then we'll take the next best available player or player that's going to help our team. So uh, for now, let's take Kenny Pickett to be our franchise quarterback for the future. And then let's just wait and see what's going to happen at number 19. Now, at number 17, the Chargers, who wanted to trade up so bad for a tackle, they didn't get it. There's rumors out there saying that they're very interested in Jordan Davis. However, they went so defensive heavy in free agency, Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson, uh, traded for Khalil Mack. So that defensive line, is okay if they pass up on Jordan Davis for now. You really need offensive line help. I mean, your defense is a Super Bowl contending defense. This offense is pretty good, but you need some help for 
Justin Herbert. You need some protection. It's a little bit of an overdraft, but I'm going to say that the Chargers pick Zion Johnson, and this is the explanation behind that. So Zion Johnson is a offensive lineman for Boston College, and, and the reason why the Chargers pick Johnson in particular is because he, he's specifically playing at guard for the most part, but he's played every position on that offensive line. So you could move him to tackle if you so wish to do so. So they added Rashawn Slater last year. You can add another bookend for you on the other side and Zion Johnson, and I think the Chargers are okay with that. It's a little bit of an overdraft because Zion Johnson, many people are talking about, okay, well, he's going to get drafted in the 20s. Maybe he's going to fall outside of the first round. But you got to keep in mind that the Chargers don't have a second-round pick. Uh, so, and in one instance here, you could trade down if a team is interested in trading up. But I'm going to go ahead and say that the Chargers are just going to overdraft for now. They're just going to take Zion Johnson. Uh, and, and yeah, many people might like criticize that. Oh, like you could have waited. Well, like he's not going to be around in the third round. So might as well just take him now. So Chargers, Zion Johnson. Number 18, the Philadelphia Eagles. One of their three first-round picks after that trade with the Packers, they are being linked to either Devontae Wyatt or Jordan Davis, those two Georgia defensive tackles. Jordan Davis is the consensus defensive tackle. Many people have ranked as a number one defensive tackle. Many people might say Devontae Wyatt as well, but for the most part, many people are saying Jordan Davis is the defensive tackle. So I'm going to say that the Philadelphia Eagles draft Jordan Davis here and to help out their defensive line, Fletcher Cox, you re-signed him to a one-year deal, but you like you released Fletcher Cox, and then you couldn't really, you were like, oh man, well, we need defensive line help, and then you re-sign him. I think it was just for salary cap issues. I don't know. I don't know what the reasoning behind that was. But Jordan Davis is going to be your defensive tackle for the future, hopefully having a career like Fletcher Cox for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now the Saints. We talked about how they need an offensive lineman, and a wide receiver. You've got Kenny Pickett. You're locked in for the future. You're good. Now they see that the Philadelphia Eagles did not draft a wide receiver, which they could have, in helping uh, or be side-by-side uh, Devontae Smith. So they're going to go ahead and take the next best available wide receiver and Chris Olave, who has a lot of talent. He's fallen to the number 19 pick. So the Saints are saying, okay, let's go ahead and draft him. And then number, uh, later on, uh, we could go ahead and draft someone else. Because if I'm looking at the uh, picks for the New Orleans Saints right here, they have the 17th pick in the second round. A guy that they're very interested in, according to draft rumors out there, is Tyler Smith. He's an offensive tackle. Could play guard, could play tackle. So I think the Saints want to target Tyler Smith later on in the second round. Uh, they could trade up to grab him if they feel like someone else is going to draft him. But Tyler Smith is going to be their offensive line help later on in the draft. For now, you get your quarterback in the future, and then you get your wide receiver of the future and Chris Olave with the number 19 pick. Now, no, with the number 20 pick, this might be a surprise if this happens because, again, a lot of people get trigger happy with quarterbacks uh, in the draft. But, uh, but Malik Willis, if he's available for the Pittsburgh Steelers who are high on him, you need a quarterback. I, I think Malik Willis is the best choice for the Steelers at this point. Uh, I, I can't really think of m many other options. If if this all plays out the way that this draft does, and Malik Willis is still available at, on the board at number 20, I can't really think of anyone too much worthy of drafting over Malik Willis. So... I'm going to say that the Steelers grab Willis to be their quarterback of the future. Is he going to start over Mitchell Trubisky? I don't know. But he's going to definitely be a, an asset for the Steelers in the future. Now at number 21, the New England Patriots are drafting here. And I think they're locked in. They are locked in at linebacker because they lost uh, Jimmy Collins, Dante Hightower, and uh, they released Kyle Van Noy as well. So the next best available linebacker, actually the first linebacker, to be drafted in this draft class, in this mock draft, is Devin Lloyd from Utah. I made this joke last week where uh, if you want your kid to be a star linebacker in the NFL, just name him Devin, like Devin White, Devin Bush, and now you have Devin Lloyd as being the best linebacker out of Utah. So the Patriots, if they draft Devin Lloyd, and it could be Nicobe Dean as well, like whoever the best linebacker is in your opinion, 
Uh, whichever linebacker goes in that defense, I, I 100% see a few Pro Bowls out of them uh, in their NFL career. So they're going to have a great career if a linebacker goes to that Patriots defense. And uh, now the next pick, the number 22 pick, originally held by the Green Bay Packers. But if you remember our trade, the Philadelphia Eagles traded with the Packers, and now the Eagles hold this pick. They also need some linebacking help. They also need some edge help. They need some safety help. They need help on that defense. So I'm going to say that they draft uh, the second defensive player for their draft, uh, already drafted Jordan Davis. The next defensive player for them is going to be Nicobe Dean. Devin Lloyd gets taken. Nicobe Dean is available. He gets taken. Many people are saying that he was probably the anchor of that Georgia defense, like he was the leader and, and the smarts behind that defense as well. So Nicobe Dean is going to be the pick for the Philadelphia Eagles at number 22 in this mock draft. I'm not saying like it's going to happen. I'm saying in this mock draft, it could be an option. All right, the Arizona Cardinals. This is a very interesting team at number 23. Because I feel like the best thing for the Cardinals to do, draft an offensive lineman. Oh my gosh, Kyler Murray was running around so much because the offensive line towards the end of the season was not really stepping up as they hoped. So some offensive linemen out there, Kenyon Green is still available. Bernard Raymond is still available. But you have to look at the draft board and who's still available for uh, to be drafted. And one of the best players that is falling right now is Devontae Wyatt. Well, listen, you need some defensive tackle help. Let's address offensive line later on. Let's worry about that later. For now, let's go ahead and draft the best player available, and that is Devontae Wyatt from Georgia. Pair him up with J.J. Watt. Uh, you need some edge help as well. You lost Chandler Jones. They could go George uh, Korloftis, but I, I, the defensive line really needs some help. And I'm going to get some uh, probably some crap from some Arizona Cardinals fans from not uh, drafting an offensive lineman here, but Devontae Wyatt, like just play the draft board, like play the draft best player available. He's falling. Let's get Devontae Wyatt. So no other team can get him. It's going to be a generational talent. It's going to help us for many, many years. Number 24, the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones is known for doing outlandish things, right? Um, last year, well, this was actually a very good pick. He drafted Michael Parsons when they really didn't need linebacking help. Uh, Michael Parsons came in and, and and was actually a force for the Dallas Cowboys. They drafted the best player available. Well, now at the number 24 pick, people are saying, well, the Cowboys are rumored to draft a wide receiver. Uh, I don't know, man. Traylon Burks is available. Jahan Dotson is available. George Pickens, Wondell Robinson. Like, there's there's some people available. Sky Moore. I, I don't think that they do that. I think that they go down the safe route and the best route for them is after losing Connor Williams, after losing Lael Collins, you need to solidify that line. So the Dallas Cowboys draft Kenyon Green, the next best available offensive lineman, who's a guard. So that's going to re replace the role of Connor Williams that you lost, who signed with the Miami Dolphins uh, earlier this offseason. So uh, Kenyon Green from Texas A&M is going to be the pick for the Dallas Cowboys in my mock draft. Number 25, the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Bills fans, Bills Mafia, overdraft. I'm going to go ahead and say this. This is an overdraft. But again, looking at the case of the Chargers, that was kind of an overdraft as well. You have to look at your draft capital. How much uh, spaces or spots do you have between your pick currently and the next pick that you have? So the Buffalo Bills need some help, maybe at cornerback. Um, I mean, they could draft a wide receiver if they wanted to. But an interesting thing that Sean McDermott stated in that league meeting with the owners and the coaches, he stated to the media that he wants Josh Allen to run less. All right, well, how do you do that? You need some running back help. There's no way around it. Get a guy that could be a three-down back that you hand the ball off to and could open up things for you. I'm going to explain a little bit more in depth on this, but I'm going to go ahead and say that the Buffalo Bills draft Brees Hall, the first running back off the board from Iowa State. Hall is being talked about like he, he's a three-down back. I think LaDainian Tomlinson as well, former NFL running back, all-star, all-pro running back, 
is saying and given his uh, due diligence for Brees Hall and saying that he's going to be a massive addition to any team, any third, uh, three down back for any team. Now, the explanation behind Brees Hall is Devin Singletary, they were using him as a three down back towards the end of the season. Like he was getting 20 touches a game. And I don't think Devin Singletary is designed to be that kind of guy. So um, Zach Moss has also been a healthy scratch. That experiment, it's over, it seems like, for the Buffalo Bills. They're not a believer in Zach Moss. Uh, Brees Hall could be a pass catcher as well, could be a runner in between the tackles. And in that AFC Championship game, uh, excuse me, not the AFC Championship, but the divisional game against the Kansas City Chiefs, Devin Singletary rushed for 26 yards on 10 carries. That's not going to cut it. And you would think that if you had someone maybe with a little bit more talent on the ground carrying the ball in that divisional round, maybe instead of 26 yards on 10 carries, maybe 44 yards on 10 carries, maybe 50 yards on 10 carries. Many people could argue that, well, the Buffalo Bills might have won that game. So I'm going to say it's a little bit of an overdraft, but that's my explanation. That's my reasoning. The Buffalo Bills draft. Brees Hall with the number 25 pick. All right, so the number 26 pick, this is owned by the Tennessee Titans. Titans could go, could go down multiple routes. They need some help on defense. They need some help in the wide receiver position as well. But remember Joe Douglas, our guy, who's been trading already in the first round of the top 10. He is gushing. That is the word that is being thrown around in rumors. He is gushing over Traylon Burks. How do we make this happen? Okay, well... The Jets already traded one of their second-round picks to the Atlanta Falcons. They still have another second-round pick. Hey, Tennessee, are you interested in trading down? I will give you the second-round pick that we have, which is the third pick in the second round. Not bad at all. That's pretty much a first-round pick, like a first-round talent that you get. And I am willing to trade you a first-round pick for next year as well. Tennessee, who got beat up from this Julio Jones trade, didn't work out for them. It's like, oh, man, second-round pick? We could use a second-round pick. And a first-round pick from next year? From the New York Jets, who, I mean, if history tells us anything, could have an early pick next year? Maybe. I don't know. Sure. We're willing to trade down a few spots. I don't know how many spots it is. Maybe it's eight or nine spots. But we get a first-round pick from next year? Let's do it. So the Jets trade up to the number 26 pick, and they grab Traylon Burks, wide receiver from Arkansas. Joe Douglas is making moves in this draft, in our mock draft at least, because they have the draft capital, and they're just sold on these players. You get wide receiver help. So just, just to recap for the New York Jets, for the number four pick, Ahmad Gardner, get your cornerback. The number eight pick, they traded up, Jermaine Johnson, get some edge help. The number 26 pick, Traylon Burks, get some offensive uh, weapons for Zach Wilson. So wide receiver, a cornerback, and an edge, all in the first round for the New York Jets, and all it costed them, second round picks, and a first rounder next year, but they're willing to get their guys right now uh, and and build it around them, and then they're going to worry about the future later on. So I say that the Jets... Trade a second rounder and their first round pick for next year to move on up with the Tennessee Titans. Now at number 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They desperately need some cornerback help, some secondary help, because for the past two years, that has been the Achilles heel. That has been one of the reasons why the Buccaneers have been faltering so much. I mean, Cooper Cup down the field when Matthew Stafford was in the clutch and Matt Gay kicked that game-winning field goal with just seconds remaining, secondary. Secondary was the main cause of them losing that game. So they need some secondary help, and I'm going to say that Andrew Booth, the next best available cornerback, is going to be drafted out of Clemson by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hopefully it can be a lockdown corner. We will see. But Booth, very talented guy. He's going to be drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this mock draft. At number 28, again, this was originally owned by the Green Bay Packers, but with that trade with the Philadelphia Eagles, the Eagles now have their third first-round pick of the draft. 
they need some edge help. They need some safety help. So two guys that they could be looking at if this mock draft plays out like this. Uh, Dax Hill from Michigan at safety. But then also a guy that's been falling in this draft is George Koloftis uh, from Purdue. The Greek freak uh, could be drafted here by the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to go ahead and say that they grab him, uh, get their edge help. So to, just to kind of recap the Eagles and their draft so far, if this trade happens with the Green Bay Packers and those three first-round picks are an option for the Philadelphia Eagles, they draft Jordan Davis, Nicobe Dean, and George Karloftis. So that is three players right there in the front seven. An all-defensive draft for the Philadelphia Eagles. I know it would be nice to get like Chris Olave. I know it would be nice to get maybe even with the 28 pick right here who's available on the board. Jahan Dotson maybe. It's nice, but if you solidify your defense, like I know a lot of Eagles fans out there uh, are saying like, man, if we can get all three defensive players in this draft or just two defensive players, whatever it may be, in the first round, I would be happy with that. And I think Eagles fans would be happy if they end up with three first-round talents on that defense. 29 and 30 is owned by the Kansas City Chiefs. So it doesn't really matter who picks uh, who in what order. But the Chiefs, after that trade with Tyreek Hill, they, get this, they have a, a pick available here. And I'm going to say that the Chiefs draft David Ajabo uh, an edge rusher from Michigan who has a torn Achilles, I understand, but doctors are already projecting him to have a great recovery in the process of this torn Achilles. Like something similar to maybe Cam Akers who came back in superhuman time in four months or whatever it was like. Uh, David Ajabo, maybe his 2022 season is in doubt. Maybe he doesn't even play at all. I don't know, but I still feel like that this is a first-round talent that could have top 15 upside if he didn't get hurt. And the Chiefs are one of those teams that's talented enough to make the Super Bowl. Well, okay, if you're talented enough to make the Super Bowl, that means you can take a little bit of a risk on some players. And if they don't play in 2022, that's okay. You're just preparing for the future. You have that risk that you can take. So David Ajabo is a player that they could draft on the edge. Now at pick 30, I apologize if I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly, but Jalen Peter, I want to say is a safety that could be drafted that many people are saying that the Chiefs are interested in him. I think he goes through, he plays at Baylor. Uh, but the Chiefs have their eye on him. Could be a second rounder uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs because they need some help to replace Tyron Matthew. Uh, they signed Justin Reed in the, sa uh, in the safety position as well. But I think with Dax Hill still available and, and on the board, why not just go ahead and pick the second best safety in this draft class, and that is Dax Hill from Michigan. Uh, Jalen Peter would be nice, but, I mean, you don't want to pass up on someone that's been falling like Dax Hill. Let's go ahead and draft him. Let's get that safety uh, help. Let's go ahead and replace Tyron Matthews' role and get Dax Hill. So the two picks for the Kansas City Chiefs, David Ajabo and Dax Hill. Number 31, again, the first round. This is where you got to draft some players late in the first round that are falling. Tyler Linderbaum is a center from Iowa. Very talented guy. And as far as interior offensive linemen goes, he's one of, if not the best, interior offensive linemen in this draft. I'm going to say that the Bengals go ahead and draft him because they did sign Ted Karras to play center from New England. However, Ted Karras also has some experience playing guard, so they could shift Ted Karras to guard, play Linderbaum at center. Why does Linderbaum fall so far in this draft, and why is he not being taken over players like Zion Johnson? Why not players over uh, uh, Kenyon Green? Well, it's because Linderbaum, his whole career, has played center and center only. That's all he's familiar with. That's where he's best at. And those teams didn't really necessarily need a center in particular. Uh, one of those picks for the Philadelphia Eagles, you could say they could take Tyler Linderbaum because – Jason Kelsey, you don't know what his future is going to look like. You don't know when he's going to retire. So you could take him to be your center of the future. So I, I, I could see the Eagles taking him, but I think if the Bengals at 31 see that Tyler Linderbaum is still available, got to grab him, get your center, and you'll be fine on that offensive line. Now at number 32, the Detroit Lions could go down a couple of different routes. Uh, they have this pick after trading away Matthew Stafford. 
they could get a wide receiver. They could get Jahan Dotson. They could get Wandale Robinson, which rumors are out there saying that they're very interested in Robinson. Uh, George Pickens as well. But they also had the number 34 pick, just in two picks. Well, reports out there are saying that Quay Walker, the linebacker from Georgia, is an option for the Jaguars in the second round. The Lions need a linebacker. So if you're just picking 32, Jaguars pick 33, and the Lions pick at 34, just two picks uh, away from each other, and the Jaguars are interested in Quay Walker, I'm going to go ahead and say that the Lions pick Quay Walker for now so that they can grab him ahead of the Jaguars. Jaguars can grab whoever else they need to get. And then at number 34, the Lions could pick a wide receiver with that pick. So they don't want to get too crazy. Get Quay Walker. Uh, the term, I guess, cock block is what you could use for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They cock block the Jaguars from getting Quay Walker. And then at 34, the Lions could draft their guy. So uh, that's what I have for this first round of the mock draft. And then you can kind of see on your screen as well, uh, the second round, a little bit of that. You can see that the Tennessee Titans are picking in the second round um, after that trade with the New York Jets. And then a little bit later on, the Atlanta Falcons have a pick, the number six pick in the second round from the New York Jets as well. Uh, but that's my mock. So again, I don't expect this to be 100% accurate. I know for sure it's not going to be but no mock draft in this world ever is. Uh, but this this is just pretty much telling you, okay, these are options for these teams. Like based off of the rumors and the reports that we're hearing, based off of teams' tendencies, based off of the players that teams are interested in, this could happen. These, these could be trades that teams could make as well. So I encourage you guys to please leave your comments down below. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, I would love to hear from you guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well. We're going to be coming out with mock drafts every single week. Next week is going to be our mock draft 3.0. And then the week after that, during the NFL draft, we're actually going to have a live reaction show. It's so much fun. Uh, I encourage you guys to tune into that while you guys are watching the first round of the NFL draft. Also, uh, search for us on the podcast app on your phone. Just search Time to Football. Listen to us on the go if you wanted to. Um, with all that said, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next week. Take care.